In this video, I'm gonna to react to what if a mega earthquake was to hit California? Welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. Now this should be fascinating because California is a state that I believe has a lot of sort of um, natural disasters happen to it. Things like earthquakes, wildfires, and, um, you know, with what's happening with the world, you know, a lot of people are saying that, you know, there's a lot of irreversible uh, climate change happening. You know, I don't know the science behind it, but I think California is like, I remember hearing about the um, intense wildfires that happened. I think this was uh, about two years ago and it was just huge, huge amounts of land just being just, just on fire. Just, I remember seeing the aerial view of some of these fires and it was just, honestly, it blew my mind. So this video here was recommended to me and it does pose a very interesting question because California is a densely populated uh, state. I think it's the most populous state in America at around 40 million, 40 million people. So, you know, if a, if a huge mega earthquake was to hit, I mean, gosh, the, the, the damage I would imagine would be significant. So let's go. This is gonna be me reacting to what would happen if a mega earthquake was to hit California. Let's do it. Wow. Catastrophic earthquake scenarios have played out on the silver screen for decades, terrifying viewers with quakes that can collapse skyscrapers or topple entire cities. Here's what will happen if the big Jeez, one hits man. the West Coast. On July 4th, 2019, Ridgecrest, California what? was hit with a 6.4 magnitude earthquake oh and then a 7.1 just one day later. But neither of these compare to the long-awaited big one, which scientists predict will eventually rattle the Golden Coast. But when it hits, what will that actually look like? Here's what experts say could happen in the seconds, hours, and days after the big one. Wow, just that well, destruction. I mean, both in like this image here, you know, just look at all of this. And this, this is like a house, it looks like, just completely reduced to brick. Wow. While experts can't know exactly when a quake will occur, they have a pretty good idea of where. California is located in a hot zone of fault lines, the most notorious of them, the San Andreas Fault. You know, here in California, you have dangers from a number of different kinds of earthquakes. You know, the major danger is from the earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault system. On average, the San Andreas Fault ruptures every 150 years, but southern parts of the fault have remained inactive for over 200 years. We uh, haven't had a big earthquake in Southern California really since 1857. In other words, we're overdue for a major shake. According to a 2008 federal report, the most likely scenario is a 7.8 magnitude quake that would wow. rupture a 200 mile stretch along the southernmost part of the fault. It's basically moving the ground uh, several yards over an area of 50 square miles. So, you know, the power of magnitude 7.8 earthquake is probably close to the power used in the whole state for a year. Basically something that we, as a civilization, have trouble creating with short of like a nuclear explosion. If you're near the epicenter of the earthquake, it will be nearly impossible to stand. People have this idea of running out of bed, out of their buildings, and that, that's a terrible idea because a lot of what we see in earthquakes is people with broken legs and people who run through glass. And the best thing to do, like we always say, is duck cover and hold, get under some piece of furniture. And you know, the main point is to protect your head and chest. During and immediately following the shaking, buildings could collapse. Like I've never, um, I've never felt a, uh, an earthquake before. Like there might maybe some small tremors, but never an actual earthquake. I can't imagine what it must feel like to feel the floor shake beneath your feet, you know, it must feel so surreal, you know? 
collapse. The number of buildings that were constructed before about 1980 is really significant and most of these buildings are very vulnerable to damage and collapse. In this time-lapse video, you can see how building components would hold up in a high-magnitude earthquake. Because the San Andreas will produce the kind of long period shaking, which would be uh, very damaging to very tall buildings, say in downtown LA and Century City and Long Beach and so forth. The older steel buildings, the connections in them have not necessarily been designed to withstand the maximum forces that actually can be generated. Unreinforced structures are the least stable but even buildings up to code could crumble. The building code, with its minimum requirements, does not ensure that the building will be serviceable after an earthquake. It's intended to not kill anybody. There's a sense that if it's modern, co-designed, it's earthquake-proof and everything's... Wow, I mean, this, hold on a minute, let's... Design. Yeah, look at this, this is like a big building and it's just completely fallen on its side. You wouldn't want to have been in that, man. And it's earthquake proof and everything should be great, but that's not the reality. Five steel high rises could collapse completely, while 10 others will be red tagged or unsafe to enter. And no, the quake would not cause a tsunami, despite what movies would have you believe. To trigger a tsunami, it takes an earthquake that moves the ocean floor and most of the San Andreas is on land. So there'd be a little bit of waves generated from a San Andreas earthquake, but nothing that'd be dangerous. The quake could kill about 1,800 people and leave 50,000 or more with injuries. While people could die from falling debris and collapsed structures, the highest death toll would be from fires. Historically, the biggest hazard from earthquakes has been fire. In the 1906 uh, earthquake, there were three or 4,000 people who were just caught in that wave of fire that swept through the city. My God. The aftermath of the big one will wreak havoc on infrastructure and the economy. Below our streets um, and our buildings is this really complicated network of, of infrastructure that could be damaged, and a lot of the things we take for granted every day won't be available anymore. Yeah, right? like water, running water. That would be a big one. Right, like water, electricity, being able to drive where you need to drive. Parts of the San Andreas Fault intersect with 39 gas and oil pipelines. This could rupture high pressure gas lines, releasing gas into the air and igniting potentially deadly explosions. So if you have natural gas lines that rupture, that's how you can get fire and explosions. And after the fires burn out, one of the biggest concerns in a major earthquake is access to fresh water. The major aqueduct networks that pump water into Southern California all cross the San Andreas Fault and could be seriously damaged. So we would be without the lifelines that bring in imported water to the region. They cross through tunnels, cross through aqueducts near the surface. All of these would be ruptured, and so we would be losing 60% of our water supply. Many of these distribution lines for water are near sewer lines, which would also be broken. Oh man, so the potential for contamination would be high. So now you have a situation where contaminants are potentially getting into the water supply. Experts say you should keep at least a two-week supply of water in your home. As the ground shakes and sediments shift, there will be landslides throughout Ventura and western Los Angeles County. There could be thousands of landslides. There have been earthquakes that have produced thousands. Landslides definitely can cause fatalities, property damage. Uh, we have a lot of people who live up in the hills. Right, and so that's the location where you would be likely to see landslides affecting people. And finally, the big one will severely impact the economy. Major transportation networks like highways and railways could be unusable for weeks and even months. Some bridges may not be passable um, after an earthquake. We've had bridges collapse during past earthquakes. A bridge collapsing, oh my gosh. I mean, so it would just, like a lot of the things ne necessary for society to function would be just compromised massively. You know, if a bridge collapses, that's one transport route for food, 
you know, for emergency supplies eliminated, if the water pipes get destroyed, you've got no running water, you know, if the roads, if, the, if there's massive cracks in the roads, you know, how are people gonna get around, like emergency services, just not good. I start seeing key industries leave, population loss, and this could have, you know, devastating long-term impacts for the region. Mm. The estimated financial cost of the big one is a whopping 200 billion, with 33 billion in building oh damages and 50 billion in lost economic activity. Huge. This all sounds pretty bad, but keep in mind that this is based off of a worst case scenario. The true impact of a major earthquake is based on a range of unknowable factors. Also, smaller earthquakes on faults directly beneath major population centers are a serious concern. But the worst case earthquakes are hard to predict. You know, that earthquake in Japan in 2011, their cost almost entirely came because their nuclear power plant uh, melted down. It's very hard to predict what's going to fail in a big earthquake. So, how can Californians prepare for the big one? You really have a plan in place. You know, where are you going to meet? What are you going to do? Have water ready. I have a 55 gallon drum full of water. There's some chemical additive I put in it so it's potable for five years. 55 gallons is the right amount for my, I have a family of four. That'll last us for two weeks. Canned food, you know, you have to be ready. Um, I would say it's best just to plan to stay sort of where you are, getting out of LA, is bad enough without an earthquake, right? Traffic's already terrible. If roads are closed and people are all trying to leave, it's gonna really be bad. Wow, very scary stuff. I mean, it just makes me think, if there's anyone watching this video who, who's in California, like, like, what do you think? What, is, what do you feel hearing about this? Like, are you preparing for this potential event? Like, do you have, you know, a lot of water at home? Like, like we keep a ton of water, like, you know, usually like we have like of these sort of like 500 mil bottle types, we have like, I'd say 50 of those, maybe more downstairs. I mean, yeah, I think it's important to keep running water or just drinkable water, you know, that that's essential. Like, does it worry you like Californians? Like, have you been through, like, have you experienced a huge earthquake? What was it like? You know, what did it feel like? Both the physical and mental side of both. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, this was a really interesting video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications and keep throwing the recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, keep throwing the recommendations, and I'll catch you in the next one.